All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the first session. Um, this session is going to be focused on the Helix platform and foundation, what all that means and some of the transformation. My name is Darius Wallace. I've been around for a while. Just uh, I see a lot of familiar faces. And just so we can kind of see who's also shared this history with me a little bit. For those who have been dealing with and know how to spell remedy for more than five years, raise your hands. Okay. For those who have been with remedy and been know how to been known how to spell it for more than 10 years, raise your hand. Okay, okay. 15 years, raise your hand. 20 years, raise your hand. This is the okay. 200 years, raise your hand. <laughs> no? okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so it's a good indication you guys have been working with the platform from, since the early days. And things have changed over time. Um, and this session is really going to be about understanding and seeing where Remedy fits into the ecosystem of what BMC is doing as a platform going forward. Setting that context, setting that stage hopefully broadening the view of it. With that being said, as the item stops working, hold on one sec. There we go. Okay, now it's, it's catching it's up. It's got this right here. Oh. Uh, yeah, okay, let me move that. Okay, go back. Okay. Boring notice comes up, flashes up for a second. Those who are watching the recording, pause, read this. Those who are in the room, short version. Don't do anything ridiculous or stupid with this information. Enough said. Okay. Otherwise, lawyers will come get you and you don't want any of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Helix platform. Um, you've heard the term Helix. You've heard about the platform. There's things that we're doing. Um, that is targeting us for what we plan or what we're looking for as the market to be in the next 20, 25 years. Right? Or to set up for 2025, excuse me, and set up for 2025. So we start things now, we put things in place now, playing catch up on some other things, we're pulling things together in order to address where we believe the market will be evolving to and be with customers on that journey there. Right? We'll look at how some of the broader Helix solutions leverage that platform. And then we'll bring it back to base to understand what's the current state, because the current state today has evolved from what the current state would, was, say, even five or six months ago. And two or three months from now, with the release coming out in 220X, there'll be a next step in that evolution. But what I want to be able to do is lift the covers a little bit and make sure that everybody's on the same page about kind of where we are relative to the broader platform, where things fit, but understand this is continuing to evolve. Right? So. That's the context we hope to provide. So most of us who've indicated, or a lot of us who've been around for 20 plus years, have been also involved longer than that, going back 40 years, back in the mainframe days. It's a different focus. Mainframe was the dominant element out there, dealing with data management and monitoring. We come forward a bit, we start dealing with innovations and in provisioning and automation. We start dealing with distributed and open systems. We come a bit further into the 2000s, start the beginnings of the cloud and introducing uh, that other medium for working on <clears> solutions uh, in a SaaS or PaaS type uh, infrastructure. And then going a step further, 2016 and beyond, you've got coordination and activities between different functions within the organization. Between DevOps, working across the cloud, dealing with on-prem solutions, et cetera. So the point being is that things have evolved, they will continue to evolve, they will continue to leapfrog into different types of capabilities within the market. And if we just try to keep pace with where we are, try and build to that point, we'll never be in the position to be in a good position for our customers to leverage what we're doing going forward. So the strategy within the last four or five years is for BMC to establish a strategy that looks out, looks forward. And as we look at 2025, we expect customers have already begun this journey. <clears throat> Some of them are putting things in place to be in this position to deal with what we refer to as the autonomous digital enterprise. 
So you'll see that term come up a lot. Now, I'm not going to take you through the 20 to 30 minute session about what that world looks like in depth, the ins and outs of it, how the things expected, the futuristic view of it, and how we have all the markers to indicate that that's what we believe the environment will be like. It's a whole set of decks available on bmc.com that can take you through all that stuff and do a far better job at it than I can. So, but I'm just going to set the stage for the primary components because I want to set the context for taking you to that next level, which is, okay, that's great, but how does the platform enable that? And also, where does service management and remedy fit within that ecosystem? So with that in mind, we'll talk about the key components of that autonomous, autonomous digital enterprise. Starting off to the right, automation, we all know has succeeded in the past, but it's going to be even more a part of the equation because you have to be able to do things efficiently, effectively. And you know that there's a variety of automation tools that are out there all competing in that space. Um, you'll see the direction for BMC is not to necessarily get caught up into establishing the, 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 the one solution for doing automation and have customers use that. Customers will make choices. So the platform is set up and staged in order to enable automation to be, to be leveraged to feed into the platform story, right? So as Margaret had mentioned in her previous and our opening, there are several automation solutions out there. We have intelligent automation, which is intended to integrate and tie into those solutions so the customers have choices to leverage whichever automation solution fits their needs and then still tie it in to the end-to-end -end story. <laughs> Don't need to spend a lot of time. So everybody should be familiar with DevOps. Enterprise DevOps has been in motion for at least the last five or six years. Um, and making that connection between things getting done, uh, more frequent releases, things getting out to the uh, to production, and coordinating that with the more uh, back-end service management side, especially when you tie it into things like change management and other things going on in the environment. So there'll be a lot more of that going on. Data-driven business. Data is big. We've evolved from the reference to say, when you look at a solution, you look at it and you describe it that it's always about people, What's the other P? Process. This is where you guys chime in. The next one starts with the T, technology, and now data. So now it's expanded from those three pillars to four, which is people, process, data, and technology. Right? So that's going to data's become a big part of being able to understand what you have in the environment. Adaptive security, looking at the fact that there's all kinds of bad actors out there trying to get at the very data that we just talked about and having things in place to have that protection built into the solution. And then ultimately having that transcendent customer experience, leveraging the different channels and mediums in which people can interact and get things done. Not necessarily always being limited to a single form that you fill out, but leveraging the different chat options and the different mobile cap uh, capabilities and devices to interact with the system and be available to get things done. Right? So all of these things will be at play needing to be agile within that environment um, and then understand what's going on and then make some key decisions. So where does that lead us? Some key things come up. This, this, this list could be a lot longer, but right off the bat, some things we need to do. We need to make sure that we are tied into that digital experience, the movement of information in a digital fashion between different organizations, between different people. <clears throat> This always on concept, you know, that we have people working around the world, around the clock, people now, especially with the pandemic, it's kind of uh, acted as a catalyst to happen even more. People are working remotely, therefore more readily available. Customers are adjusting to that need to get things up and running and in place and available, always available to your end customers. <coughs> Excuse me. And then being able to deliver in a proactive way to get to resolution. Key thing is moving from reactive to proactive. Okay. That means that when something happens, you're not finding out at the time it happens or the, at the point when things fail, but you're able to, to understand when there's degradation or anomalies that happen in the environment and get on top of those things and be proactive in your operations to resolve them before it affects your end users. These are key things that we have to make sure we focus on. So what are the things that get in the way of that? We have a lot of things that are in our code base that comes out, there's uh, obviously we're not doing big pay, big bang code releases as much anymore. They're iterative releases, 
right? Iterative releases that get fixes and solutions and capabilities out there faster to the market. You've got to be able to deal with that while at the same time maintaining these needs over here to the left. We're also dealing with things that are now no longer just a single environment, which is a single environment deployed on prem. We have to accommodate the fact that not only is there the cloud environment, but we also have to deal with the fact that the reality is we live in a hybrid world. There will be things that are on prem, there will also be things in the cloud. In fact, there will be multi cloud solutions that we need to interact with. So, how does that landscape work? And how do we make sure things continue to work as we move from one deployment paradigm to another? Um, Access to these things come across a variety of different devices, right? Even whatever we have today, five years ago, some of the stuff we have on our desk or some of the things we carry around our pockets weren't even available. Um, I frankly just recently um, realized that my phone that I thought was working perfectly fine is considered old. And I got it three years ago. Okay, And the reason it's old because they have this little thing going on, I'm a vent for a second, where they continue to quote unquote, improve the operating system to improve, to improve your productivity and support more things they can do. But in the process of doing that, the OS they give you gets bigger. And because that OS gets bigger, that means I have less space on my device, which means that I have less cash, which means my phone slows down, which means my phone is now old from three years ago. And so now I have to go get a new phone to realize the phone I'm buying costs almost as much as a computer itself, right? So back to this thing about these devices, <laughs> continuously evolving, continuously changing, coming into the mix for things that we're trying to do to move forward. Also, the degree in which we talk about data is just not, you know, data is the four letter word, but the fact is, is that it is tied in and related in a variety of different ways, connect all kinds of connected things come into play. And going above and beyond that, whatever we're thinking about we're doing now, there's already folks in innovation labs doing things that are planning for things going forward. So you, you wanna make sure that you have an environment that allows you to be in a position to deal with all of these challenges that are coming and will persist as we go forward. So to that end, you wanna stay ahead of the issues, you wanna move things faster, you wanna be always on, you want to stop relying on manual processes. Doesn't mean there aren't manual processes. Let me be very clear about that. But you don't want to be in the position for some of these innovative, innovative activities that are going on, some of the things that are happening um, and being going from reactive to proactive, where in order to move that needle, manual processes are essential for you to keep up with what's going on. Right? There will still always be humans involved acting as the catalyst, be further on the outside, benefiting from those end results as opposed to being in the way of things moving forward. You have analytics that are happening. Back in the day, go back in the day, five, 10 years ago, you would kind of do analytics in, in one area and that would give you great information about that area. But when you start expanding to the enterprise and understand the interplay between data and how that brought together can inform, put you in a position to make informed decision at the enterprise level, that's a whole no game, right? So having uh, consolidated analytics or analytics being brought, or data being brought together to do that more holistic analytics is key. And you don't want to be in that position of saying, okay, I got a bunch of us information. This is all interesting, but let me just, you know, finger in the air and just kind of do it this way, right? Clearly, that's not mm -hmm. the approach going forward. The key around this is to really look at addressing this by bringing service management and operations together. Not just that so they're aware of each other, but in fact, that what you do in one benefits and adds value to the other. And so when you see that holistic view, you're in the better position to look at things holistic. Now, from our remedy days, a lot of the things that we came in from a platform standpoint back in the day, we, we those of us who remember, you, we started with, there were no apps. We built our apps from scratch, right? It was, it was a whole model, that commercial that came out, Burger King, build it your way. I think we even had that as a tagline for us back in there when we first started. We built the apps from the ground up. But when we came into the market with solutions, we were anchored around service management, <clears throat> ITSM, IT service management with regard to problem, change, incident, building apps on top of that platform, right? As you come into BMC, we have operations that was, pre, uh, go back four or five years, three or four years, uh, operations had its own space of activities. You had, you know, Blade and doing uh, network operations, server, op so, several, excuse me, network automation, server automation. Um, we had uh, Atrium Orchestrator or True Side Orchestration or, or whatever we choose to call it next because, you know, we got to keep changing the names to keep you guys 
awake. Um, but ultimately, yeah, exactly, exactly, just like the phones. But we're all kind of evolving now, and we've kind of looked at things, and we know we cannot operate in that isolated fashion and continue to keep up with some of the goals I described before. Okay, it just won't, it just won't scale. We can keep doing it, but then you know we won't be able to add value to the customers who are actually moving forward with the things that I've talked about. Again, it's that autonomous digital enterprise that we are targeting for some of the innovations that we're investing in. So to that end, <clears throat> we still have service management, right? There's a phrase that's coming out there that's looking at enterprise service management or different letters. If you look at it, <clears throat> it's still service management, but sometimes service management is being applied now to broader spaces in the enterprise. They're being applied to facilities. They're being applied to HR. They're being applied to different areas in the organizations that historically did not have the governance that we typically would work with when we did IT. When IT, we have been ingrained from ITIL to IT for IT and all these processes that says, when you do something in your environment and you touch production, you better put it under change control. Because if you don't, you end up shooting yourself in the foot more often than not, because you don't know what you're affecting when you make those changes. So there's a governance around that. So within IT, we've evolved over time to know how important those processes are. And when we start going to the enterprise and other parts of the organization, there's value in applying similar type of control or similar type of processes to govern that, especially when we start honing in on how important it is to pay attention to data, because data is no longer just limited to IT. Data is in other areas of the organization. When married with IT and other information, it becomes <clears throat> extremely valuable to the company. Right? So when you look at that, from that perspective, you now have a lot of information with service management taking into account AI and machine learning to help you look into things that we manually are not going to find. We're not going to be sitting back looking at all this data and realizing that, oh, there's a little nuance about something that's, that possibly can cause us a problem in two weeks if it keeps up. So leveraging machine learning and AI as a mechanism to evaluate this data and put forth candidates or highlight situations that you may need to act upon becomes a critical part of enabling our capability. When we look at the front end and experience for customers, we've talked about people having access and getting into the system via my old piece of junk phone or the new phone I have to get next week um, or tablets or other devices that come into play to show things on the screen. So supporting those different channels, not only from devices, but also means in which we interact. Chat is being used and pro becoming very prolific. Ask a simple question, put it in and get a response, right? Even to the point of talking about chat bots, where you're trying to shift some of the activity from humans to being able to address some of the simple questions that a chat bot can answer and would not then switch over to the live agent, things like that. All those type of interaction models. Then looking at AI ops, and again, this is looking at that reactive to proactive move, um, establishing the, the metrics of what's going on, knowing that performance is at the levels that you would expect, and then ensuring that it stays there detecting anomalies. And then the point of looking forward, being able to predict when things are not going to align up. You know that an event's going to come up, such as a conference, and therefore there may be more demand for a given product. How do you ensure that you have the elasticity in place or you scale your system in order to satisfy that particular event and then scale back down when you're into the more normal state of things? Right? Having the ability to look across the landscape and accomplish all those things are all key characteristics of being successful what we believe the market and what customers are moving toward in this digital enterprise. You go a step further and you look at, you got to know what you have out there. Some of the basic blocking and tackling is still key. You got to discover, you got to go find those things and figure out what's going on out there. And you see all of this is sitting on top of the transcendent customer, the automation everywhere, uh, everywhere enterprise DevOps, data-driven, and uh, the adaptive cybersecurity. Now, this is the extent of the marketing slides, okay? This is kind of all setting the stage for why we're doing what we're doing, how things are looking and putting that in place. What we're about to get into now is that that's great, that's interesting, that sounds good. Um, but how does, that how does that matter? How does that, based on where we are today, how do we get to the realization of what folks I believe in this room have to deal with of putting our hands on the keyboard and working with customers to take what they have and putting it into an environment that will allow it to accomplish some of these goals. How does that happen? Well, for us, that really starts with establishing a base platform that's fundamentally different than what our deployment model was before. So let me refresh the memory 
and I probably don't have to refresh the memory. Let me reflect probably on what most of, the, of you are working with in the environment today and possibly moving toward going forward. But today's model lends it in the traditional model where we look at service and operations. Customers, I'll start with the familiar space because that's where we built up in Remedy. Customers come in and they want to start something, come into place, put some processes in place. They start within the IT service management. And you have you know, data being brought into the system for your foundation data. You have solutions that you're going to be working across between a ticket coming in and that resulting and triggering uh, something that may lead to a problem or it may tie into creating a change, et cetera, et cetera. You have a data store for tickets. You have workflow that's facilitating those. Those who are back in the day, how much we used to sit down and love putting together filters to then interact and get things done. And then we put active, active links on the front end to drive the workflow to influence how the customer interacts. And we build all that workflow on the front and the back end to pull this all together, right? All within IT. It has its own data for its own space. We're good. As long as that's the only place where you try and apply capability. But then we have operations. And you're going in and you need to do event management. You need to figure out what's going on out there in the environment so that when something goes wrong, you get an alert. So the customer now expands to that space, put processes in place. So, well, okay, let's do that. Oftentimes, these are two different organizations, two different groups, both on their own silo thread to accomplish their own goals. Okay, well, let's continue on. You then start going down the path and finding out, you know what, it's probably good to know what we have as far as our, uh, our <clears throat> infrastructure and assets that we have in the environment, because that actually would be beneficial to IT, obviously. And it would also provide some value to operations. So when we start acting on events, we know what we're talking about that's actually out there. More importantly, finding the stuff that shouldn't be on our network. So discovering and finding things that are out there and storing them in their data store. Well, gee, now let's think about the fact that, you know, just among these things, one plus one now equals three. If I find an event, I actually need that event to result in triggering my IT operations organizations by creating an incident so that they can then pick up on the incident and act upon it and then get into the break fix mode. So now I've got in that simple case, event management working in concert with is it incident management. And now I have these two things working together. Well, how do we address that? Well, we build integrations between the two areas, leveraging the fact that we have to leverage the data, which is beneficial to both. Because what I need for IT, if I'm talking about my broken phone, I need to make sure that in the ops side, they're also talking about the same broken phone that I have, right? So we go forward and we start expanding and looking at other areas. And we start looking at, oh, in some cases, we need to do interactions between the data. We need to move data from here, which in the CMDB or maybe in discovery needs to be published into the CMDB. And then from the CMDB for the event management team to get benefit from it, we need to publish that over to have that consistent model over in our I, um, event management solution, in this case, uh, true side operations, TSOC, right? So we're moving down data around. So we put in place flows that support that activity. Start looking at capacity, we're starting to move forward. We're starting to now start looking at service catalogs as we need to start looking at the front end. So you see these customers expanding into these areas, but the approach of introducing a siloed capability with data and information, and you start noticing there's some similarities that, that we find across the board. And, things that we do. And then we start looking at other verticals or other spaces outside of that that also benefit from the information that's in place. And we start talking about that enterprise service. Now. Oops. So when we go forward here, we start looking at other layers that come into play. <clears throat> we start finding that, oh, there are some interactions that we need to have that didn't necessarily come out of the box, or we need to understand we have a solution where there's a non-traditional path in which we need to interact with something. And therefore we have ad hoc integrations that we build in order to meet that specific need, right? Now, when you look at this, how many of, how, how, does this look familiar to many of you? Most of you, okay? Yeah. This is pretty much the world. Now, I don't say this to be critical because let's go back to the previous slide, the 80s, the 90s, 2000, things evolve. And if you take, it's like building up, somebody says to me, oh, well, why did you build it that way? Well, I'm sorry, if you tell me to go build a tree house and all you give me is a hammer and some nails, you don't give me a saw, you don't give me a ladder, but I still got to build this tree house. <clears throat> I'm going to use the hammer and the nails. I'm going to find creative ways to break the board, to put the pieces in place. 
and the treehouse is going to get there. It's going to work. But don't come at me, you know, 20 years later or 10 years later with people who now have a hammer, nail, saw, electric saw and and um, uh, a ladder um, and a whole bunch of other resources. And then you build this Taj Mahal treehouse and say, well, why didn't you build this 20 years ago? Well, those aren't the tools we had then. That's not where we were. That's not where the market was. That's not the capability I had back then. So we built what we built, and now we have to take a step. And they have to find that inflection point where you say, okay, I can't keep building tree houses based upon hammers and nails. There's these other tools and mechanisms out there. There's these other needs for when people and these kids climb up in these tree houses. Um, and they actually would now use their mobile phones because in the 80s, I, I didn't have a mobile phone. In the 80s, I had that old good old brick-sized pager you, know, you were walking around with. So things change. So now that's where we end up with our inflection point here. You'll point out, we'll see that there's some other things that you start seeing a pattern that things are done consistently in different areas, but within each of the silos. Each of these areas need to ingest information. Each of these areas have some aspect of workflow that needs to be done. And in the siloed environment, guess what we would do? We do so maybe two areas would leverage an ingestion me mechanism that was common, but in most cases, I need ingestion, so I build my ingestion. You need ingestion, you build your ingestion. <clears throat> and then we release it to the customer, and the customer's like, well, wait a minute, if I'm bringing data in, why, are you, why do I have to do three, four different ways in which to get data in the system? You have all the data. Other things that become replicated. I'm sure you're very familiar with this for any of you that are working across the enterprise. You end up with reporting. Well, we have reporting that may be done in two or three different solutions, two or three different ways. We start looking at modeling. Modeling is done at least in two or three different places. We hopefully get to the point by anchoring the CMDB to establish that as a system of record, to pull it together, then then share with other folks. But if you don't have ITSM and all you have is event management, guess what you're doing? You're building a model. Okay? With those two, automation is addressed different ways. We start looking at now coming forward into AI and machine learning. We even were at that, at that precipice of having different siloed capabilities investing in their own AI machine learning capability within the silo that they were focused on, okay? And that may have been great for those that customers that stayed within that silo, but for customers that are doing the broader digital transformation activities, now you have all of these things you need to support and in fact, it seems to be redundant, but done different ways. So this is where we come to and start paying attention to the fact that we've got to make a shift. And there's got to be a catalyst event for that. And that's really what Helix is all about. That's what moving toward being effective in that autonomous digital enterprise is all about. To that end, we start looking at having common data stores, right? Shared data stores that you store the information once and you leverage it consistently across multiple solutions. In that regard, we hope to simplify the aspect of the environment by bringing in common data stores into a common uh, consistent consistent uh, space. We then start looking at integration services. Um, <laughs> for those who have been around, you know everything from point to point to uh, Atrium Integrator, running on top of Pentaho, tied in. I won't even go on. There's been a variety of things that we've over time put in integration solutions between things. Um, and that's proven to be a challenge for customers because now they have to maintain disciplines and expertise and all those different integration methods. Well, the goal is what can we do to put together a consistent way in which we do integrations? This time, we, 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 we mean it, okay? <laughs> okay? Well, I, for all, I just had to remind myself, you guys have been here around about as long as I have, 23 plus years. This, we've said it three or four, this time we mean it. And when I say we mean it, it's not because it's like we mean it and we plan on doing it. We mean it because it's actually, we can show you things that in fact, when things are built, they are directed to leverage our Helix iPass solution when talking to third parties or to leverage the Kafka bus in order to interact between items, okay? That is built into and designed into the platform, purpose built for those interactions, right? We start looking at core services that are used over and over again, ingestion services, workflow, things like that. Let's pull those together and find where the commonality is and start leveraging. Let's maybe look and lean toward a reporting solution that can be leveraged in a consistent way across the disciplines, right? I'm sure you guys remember, not to air dirty laundry, but uh, 
I must say not to air dirty language because I know I'm, I know I'm recording, but you know, we, we, we had a uh, solution that was implemented in one product area of our event management space. And ironically, even though we selected the same reporting solution implemented in service management, but then how we enabled it was different. And so when one started using the other solution, because now they're doing a solution up, we had to reconcile how these different mechanisms and licensing agreements had set up was, was different, right? So pulling those core services together to have some consistency is key. One of those services, one of those capabilities, in addition to integration services, is ingestion, consistently bringing information into the platform or into the common data stores. Let's pull that together. And the key thing here is now looking at our solutions that are across the top. So when we take a look at our goal of kind of pivoting toward a platform that takes advantage of common data stores, core services, integration services, ingestion services, this is the foundation of what makes up the Helix platform. Okay. Yes. Quick question. Yes. What's the difference between ingestion and integration? For me, the question is, what's the difference between integration and ingestion? Okay. For me, ingestion is bringing information in unidirection, bringing information into the system. Integration tends to be transactional and bi-direction. It does not mean that there's not an intersection between the two where you have connectors and you need to get out to things to bring things in. And therefore, on integrations, we also leverage connectors on the outside to interact with those things and bring things in. But the distinction is, at least as I look at it from an architect standpoint, ingestion is really focused about being laser focused on getting information from disparate sources into the system this way, bringing things flowing into the system, right? And integration is more transactional with an expectation of bi-directional communication. It could be outbound. Integration could be overlapping with ingestion. Maybe integration is going to pull something into the system in a transactional basis, right? But when you look at ingestion, we're talking about large sets of information, bulk data that may be coming in. We want to do that as effectively and efficiently, which we all know you don't leverage transactional mechanisms to do bulk loads of information. That's, that's just flawed because it just, it just doesn't scale. It takes way too long. Right? So that's so that's suggestion is still a critical part. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right? Not indigestion, but, but, but ingestion. <laughs> ingestion. <laughs> all right. Yes, yeah, so if you do it wrong, it will give you indigestion. But um, so how do we how do we now make the connection between? So you have ingestion bringing information in, you have an indication of integration being more focused on the bidirectional communication and transactional nature of interactions. We also acknowledge the fact that hey, there may be one-off instances, and so we can't have a closed architecture. So we have an open API in order to interact with certain components of the system should the customer need to do that, and we put in place the Helix portal to act as a facilitator for accessing the solutions or more importantly, managing the configuration and administration of the platform itself. Okay. So at a very high level, this reflects that not only the Helix platform, but it's positioning to support higher level solutions. But let's go a step further. We talk about common data stores, what does that mean? That's not just a data link where you just throw everything, you dump everything in there, and then you put it on the consumers to figure out who's where and what's what. Well, great, it's all together, but how do I figure out what's there? It's structured, right? Like things go together, and we don't have two or three or four different topological representations of items, right? So if we look at topology, we have, the goal is to be moving toward having um, service models and service maps represented in a single place to be leveraged as needed across the solutions. When we talk about log information, you all, <laughs> you all know every solution had its own log in its own format of storing the logs. And if you had to look across things, you had to be a genius to know all the different formats of the different logs, especially if you're trying to chase things end to end. You know, over 20 years, some of you have become geniuses. Okay, well, sorry, we're going to relieve you, hopefully, of that by introducing the log data store. For that. Events coming in, capturing metrics, config information, knowledge information coming in. As uh, Margaret mentioned in the beginning, these things we've invested in to ensure that we establish capability in these areas. Come around is a, it's not one of our newest, but it's one of our acquisitions that we came in place with a 
very key focus around knowledge management and having that as a data store to manage along with the practice around it, as an example. When we look at ingestion services, bringing in information, topological information, not just data, but there's certain characteristics of the data that we know. And when that comes in, we need to make sure it gets into the right data store in a consistent way so the upstream solutions can leverage it consistently. We have core services. This is just a subset of the core services that make up the Helix platform. And when we look at that, we take a look at the different uh, capabilities that are in place with regard to automation, reporting, and machine learning, modeling, applications, workflow. Go over to the right, our integration services, we use an iPaaS approach for our solutions for integration, primarily with third-party solutions. So we have a Helix iPaaS as a solution which is supported by one of two underpinning technologies between <clears throat> Jitterbit and MuleSoft. And we first were anchored primarily around Jitterbit, and then there were certain government or on-premise requirements or needs that needed to be met, and we adjusted accordingly to also expand our capability to include MuleSoft, which has a different architecture that fit that purpose. So we have flexibility there, but the Helix iPaaS layer on top is consistent. These are the underpinning technologies. Now I wanna be clear here. The one thing that you don't see on this slide and you will not see in this presentation because we just don't have anywhere near enough time is the underpinning technologies that are going on under, you know, underneath the hoods here for, for these solutions, such as Kafka, Grafana, um, Elasticsearch, all these other things. There's technologies that is the next level layer down that are supporting, but they're the traditional, not traditional, excuse me, they're the well-known established uh, innovative solutions that uh, technologies that we have in place. But the reason we stay at this level is at some point in time, there may be a new sheriff in town when it comes to how things should be done. That should be transparent to the consumer upstream if we swap out that technology to, to meet the need with whatever is the latest and greatest in the world, right? Thus, the reference to architecture, capital A architecture, not just little a architecture where we architect individual things and just try and stitch them together. And then you look across the top and these are the solutions that, some of the solutions, many of the solutions that we have in play that support some of the things that we talked about earlier, right? Now let's illustrate a little bit how this comes low, come together at a high level. If we start, we can look for example at our space of ITSM, service management. And we'll see in service management, we know that we do things at the workflow layer. We, write, we have applications that get leveraged. We do reporting. We actually have some aspects of modeling when we tie in the CMDB. We come down to the data stores that get hit by that. We have ticket and case information, information that is stored in topology, and we have knowledge management, right? So this first spread here says, these are all the typical, doesn't mean it doesn't touch others. And as we go forward, some will very much argue, especially product management and product marketing, that I should have lit up AI and machine learning if I think about the things that we do with service management now and what we're doing going forward in this and subsequent releases. But I'm anchoring it to, to us here, right? Typically, these are the spaces we're in, right? For these, for these uses. But when we go over and we start, not but when we go over to discovery, we can now see that where do we re-leverage, where, where do we reuse information? So when it comes to being reused, I just changed it to yellow to say, yes, Discovery also does modeling. And it will leverage the same modeling mechanism and technique that will be uh, leveraged for ITSM, okay? It also leverages top to uh, topology as far as its data store, okay? Now, um, over drinks, I'll explain a little bit more about the nuance and our evolution between the CMDB still persisting and the fact that we have also our dynamic service model in place but you'll have to pay for drinks and then I'll tell you all about that story later. Um, but it represents the fact that this is where we are today between those two CMDB is still core to it. So there's some topological information there, but for the most part, all other things, all the other spaces and things are tying things into and moving toward <clears throat> our DSM, a dynamic service model data store, which is the top, topological view here. And we just highlighted in yellow because it's being used more than once. When I start coming into AI ops, I start looking at AI machine learning, reporting is used again, same reporting, Grafana um, is being, we're moving toward Grafana. For those who have smart reporting, you've probably seen the notice, but we're moving away from smart reporting and the underpinning uh, technology for that and moving towards starting leverage the dashboards of Grafana, right? Because why? And this is, I say this very important as you guys work with your customers, because we need to. We don't want to persist multiple reporting solutions in our customer base. And sometimes that's at the expense of what customers may be comfortable and used to because it took them two or three years to get comfortable with this. 
And now we introduced Grafana, which has another tech reporting technology. We could have stayed with this to see if it scaled with the smart reporting and see if it would apply. But that was the litmus test that was done in this architecture. It wasn't just automatically go grab everything new. What we had, we actually took things that existed and said, can it meet the need of the larger platform? And in fact, for discovery, it persisted. The data store that we're using for discovery for DSM is the data store that discovery data store that discovery is used before. We just upgraded to the new version of that data store, and that has now become the topological data store for the entire platform. So you know we had multiple solutions. We did investigate each one of those, and if they could have persisted to support the entire platform, we would have stuck with that. But the goal was to get down to shared capability, and that meant at the expense of certain things. So you'll run into those some of those conversations with our customers. So I wanted to let you know and be aware of that. So you'll see also as you come over, uh, additional components get used in the data store, event, metrics, config, and policy. <clears throat> we come over and look at optimize. Optimize will add logging and other capabilities that come, the other, other reuses, other things getting lit up because they're also using modeling and reporting and topology uh, going forward. And then you have uh, also using config and metrics. So this kind of gives you an example. Now, I could do this all day and expand and do the same things, but you get the point. The point of this is really just to highlight the reusability of certain aspects of the solution, purpose building by design, which is fundamentally different than the picture you saw before. Now, let's quickly get into the current state and understand what does that mean relative to where we are today, right, in the evolution of this planet. So I'm going to lift up the covers for this audience. Um, which is the first audience where we lift, where I've, I'll speak for myself, where I've lifted up the covers outside of inside of BMC. Okay. So it's basically say, let's, let's align us to understanding that you are on this journey with us as administrators, as developers, as um, thought leaders working with our customers. Let's, let's be clear. <laughs> we did not snap our fingers overnight and this platform just manifested itself in its holistic fashion as we decide, as we define it. We all know that BMC Remedy has had to evolve and make adjustments over time. And when you come to something like this, this is a little bit kind of not a little bit kind of a lot of a different philo philosophical approach toward an architecture. And so we're evolving the move into this architecture, which means we're going through different stages of this evolution. I will say very definitively within this last six months and then six months before that, we're in a fundamentally different place to the realization of this architecture at this level. Six months ago, we just did an acquisition uh, recently with uh, Streamweaver that's act that essentially put in place the solution that will address our ingestion capability in a consistent way. Where we started was we were doing it from scratch internally, but we've evolved and moved into leveraging a technology that was better served. And BMC is very much vested in bringing in those capabilities that enable us to get a consistent way for the performance that we need. And that was within the last three or four months. Right? So to that end, let's just take a look at the fact that we have the service management asks space of items, and then we have what we refer to as kind of the ADE-based common services. These are, these are services that were kind of purpose-built to do things that are targeted toward that vision of 2025, right? So AI machine learning was introduced as that key area that was introduced and, and, and made as a core service. So there's a little bit of a partitioning here at this stage, but what I really want to show you is that even within service management, and you guys have heard of this, when you look at the converged platform, this will look familiar to you for those who are looking at anything prior to 21.3 or 20, something prior. <laughs> not get caught up in the numbers because, of course, that's another thing we got to change regularly to keep you keep you guessing. Uh, but now we're on the convention of year and uh, and what number of the what what how many of the year we release. So 20, 2103 is the third release of the year twenty twenty one. Twenty two oh one will be twenty twenty two first release of the year. Right type of thing. So prior to forget what version, but let's just say it's a version. Was it which is twenty one. Thank you, 2101, oh, prior, prior to 21. The converged model was not in place, which I'll show you in a second. We had this layout where Core Remedy, then you had some, you had the Helix platform with its space and DWP, C. Okay, so familiar with you guys to kind of work through that. We know this was 
evolved to be somewhat of a proliferation model within the customer environment. But the philosophy persists throughout BMC for cord and converged and shared services. And when you look at that, coming to 21.x is where you come to the converged platform. So even within the space of service management in that area, that concept, that philosophy, that strategy, is ingrained in how we're moving toward establishing a consistent, consolidated, shared common services platform to enable our capability, not only in cloud, but also on print with our support for containers and things along those lines. In fact, I believe there's a session that will do a far better job, do far more justice to the details here. I didn't want to go into this uh, in, in detail, but I wanted to emphasize the concept of a move in that direction. Right now, let's just kind of go back kind of close things out a bit and kind of move forward. And when I went to this picture here, I was trying to illustrate the fact that Cam, for the reporting side, the ADE kind of side of the fence, where we're having that shared uh, capability. The reason this is here on the lower portion in reporting as an example, to still have the service management side is because today, smart reporting is still there. But in about six months, I, I forgot what the timeline is, please, April. whoever recorded that, ignore April. what I said. Sorry. April. Okay. He said April, not Darius. He said mm -hmm. April. But whenever Smart Report, it's, it's targeted to be not a part of our platform going forward. And at that point in time, you'll see that, same with the, the data stores, you'll see that there'll be even more of an evolution of achieving the goal of having a consistent reporting capability across the platform, okay? I don't say, I don't reveal or share this in order to list it as a shortcoming. I put it out here in order to establish the reality and establish um, the right mindset as you look at what we're doing today. We are evolving and having that platform come into place and it's yielding real results based on its current capability. And we continue to evolve the solution in the platform in the philosophy that I've described thus far. But not get to a point where the intent is that it'll all be orange or all. There'll be certain things that are very much anchored in service management in the traditional sense, right? Like, for example, the CMDB, classic example. But at some point, there will be other things that actually become the model that we've shown before, which brings us back to core services, common data stores, and our BMC Helix solutions as back when I took you soon. Oops, that's not right. Of course, it all comes apart. <laughs> Hold on one second, let me go back here. And then go over here. Okay. So ultimately it brings us back to once my mouse catches up with me, there it is. That's my hand-eye coordination failing me. Okay. It brings us back to that layer of the common data model, I mean, excuse me, of the Helix platform, where we have the core services, common data stores, and the Helix solution. And it's at this point, Lenny, that you'll need to go on the video, edit that last two minutes out, <laughs> and we'll be good. <laughs> so- Yes, that's all. Okay, Phil. So, um, again, let me close with saying what our goal was. Our goal ultimately was to ensure that when you look at Remedy and the history we have with Remedy, we all know, say it up front, four years ago, three or four years ago, whatever, five years ago, whenever it was, we were talking about certain capability and Remedy having an extension for Innovation Suite, and it was going to be an extension to the Remedy platform. And we deviated from that and kind of had it separate. But now you see with the consolidated platform, Things are coming back together where the innovation suite ties tie, coupled <clears throat> in with Remedy as the platform. But more importantly, out of this session, please don't walk away with anything that's more important than this. Remedy is still in the mix and as far as it's key for supporting the service management capability, period, full stop. However, the larger ecosystem, the larger capability, the larger story, the larger opportunity, in 2025 and beyond is going to be about the autonomous digital enterprise. And from that perspective, we need to be looking from the top down. 
We need to be looking from the solution of the Helix platform on the broader scale, understanding where ITSM and Remedy fit within that mix, but the broader capability is what we wanted to provide the context for, broader capability, that broader ecosystem is what we want to emphasize is key and important to the success of what we do going forward. Hopefully this helped with that messaging. Hopefully this helped with things that you guys are looking at um, and hope you guys enjoy the rest of the conference. If there's any questions, I think I have about negative 28 seconds <laughs> to address those questions. No <laughs> Tonight. Tonight, there we Thank go. Thanks, Jerry. In the share. Okay.